the judgment. Imagine that a lie has been told and you believe the lie that your spouse is having an affair even though they haven't been. Or imagine it the other way, that your spouse believes you've been having an affair, they believe the lie, and you haven't been. You've been faithful, but your spouse now believes you've been having an affair, and so they move out because they think you've been cheating, but you haven't been. You love your spouse, you want your spouse back, you want reconciliation, what will you have to do to get them back if they believe you've been cheating? Will you have to prove your innocence? Who's on trial? Who's being judged? You are, and you're the innocent one. Understand, Satan is a liar. He's lied about God. God's done nothing wrong, but God is being judged. And this is why Paul says in Romans 3 verse 4, this is in the New King James, it says, let God be true and every man be a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. Did you know that you're judging God? Here's the good news Bible. God must be true, even though every human being is a liar. As the scripture says, you must be shown to be right when you speak and you must win your case when you are being tried. Do you remember Mount Carmel? Were the people making a judgment? If God is like Baal, worship him. If God is like Yahweh, worship him. The first judgment, Satan lied about God. Jesus has revealed the truth about God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. And we must judge, is God like Satan says, or is God like Jesus revealed? The Mount Carmel experience. The Elijah message, if you want to use it that way. What is the last time Elijah message that prepares the world? It's a message calling people to choose. Is God like Satan says, or is God like Jesus revealed? Make a judgment. Decide. This judgment is ours. And this judgment of ours determines whether we will trust God and open our hearts to him or not. If you judge God to be like Satan reveals, and like Satan lies, and like Satan presents, if you judge that conclusion, yep, that's what God's like, you may believe in God, but you will not trust him. Because he is the source of arbitrary rules that he makes up and he calls laws and he polices those laws and he has his guardian angels uh, stop at the door to whatever establishment you shouldn't go into as recording angels go in to record every sin so you will be sure to be punished properly for every sin you didn't commit, uh, confess and ask for forgiveness for. And so you will create theologies that are designed to hide you and protect you from God. You will have a mediator stand between you and the Father and plead his blood to the Father so the Father won't kill you. Or you'll believe that you have claimed the blood of Jesus to be applied in a book in heaven so that when the Father goes to open that book, he won't be able to see any of your sins because they've been erased out of that book and he's not aware. Or You'll be covered by the robe of righteousness. When the Father looks at you, he can't see any sinfulness in you. He only sees the righteousness of a son which hides your wickedness. You see, all these theologies, so many more, they're designed to hide and protect you from God because you have this view of God that you really can't trust him. If he saw you, he'd, he'd hurt you. That's pagan. That's the, the imperial view. It's the opposite of what Scripture teaches. David, again, prayed, search me and see the wicked way in me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew your right spirit within me. We are to go to our creator acknowledging the defects within us, knowing that he is the lover of our souls, knowing that he is the source of all good, knowing that he is the one who has the remedy, knowing that he longs to enter. I stand at the door and knock. If you simply open, I'll come in and I'll fix all the brokenness. That is what he wants, but we don't get there if we hold to that wrong view. So we have to judge. Is God like Satan says or is God like Jesus revealed? And in that judgment, God, I see you. You are like Jesus revealed, perfectly true, perfectly trustworthy. I open my heart. Come in. Revelation 14, 6 and 7. This is this first judgment. I saw another angel fly in midair. He had the eternal gospel, the eternal good news. Asked people, what is the eternal gospel? Jesus died to pay our sins. Well, wait a second. Eternal means eternity past as well as eternity future. There was a time before earth was even made. And was the gospel still true then? 
Yes, the eternal gospel. Think about it this way. Would you want to go to heaven and spend eternity with God if God were actually like Satan says? That's not good news to have eternal life with that kind of God. No, the eternal gospel is ultimately the eternal good news about God himself because he was the one lied about. Another angel flying with the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, people. He said in a loud voice, be in awe of God, fear God, give him glory, reveal him in your life for the hour of his judgment has come. It's the hour in human history for people to decide. It's the Elijah message, folks. It's the time for people to say, God is not this pagan, imperial, Roman dictator who is the source of pain and suffering and death. God is the creator who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and the waters. And he is the one who will restore us. Judge him to be your creator and your healer. The second judgment Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who, who will bring offerings in righteousness. And offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord." As in the days gone by, as in the former years, so I will come near to you for judgment. The second judgment. This is the judgment of the great physician who is judging or diagnosing what is wrong and judging or determining what is the best therapeutic intervention to heal and save. I am coming to you to examine you, to judge what's wrong, and to prescribe and judge the treatment that will help you. This is God bringing judgments throughout human history upon rebellious people throughout history, recorded in Scripture and even not recorded in Scripture, to convict, to redeem, to protect, to redirect, to keep open avenue for Messiah. God judged that the avenue for the Messiah was almost closed, only one righteous man, and he judged that the best action to keep open avenue for Messiah and to, and to save the human species was to send a flood. And he judged that in so doing, he would shorten human lifespan and prevent the, the, the hundreds of years of evil lives for corrupting multiple generations, and he would make the, uh, the environment more difficult to produce a harvest so people would have industrious work and human character would be protected. He made judgments. And all of his judgments are for our salvation and for our healing. And it's Jesus' work in the heavenly sanctuary, metaphorical, theatrical lesson. He is judging. What's his judging there? He is judging and determining who has surrendered their lives to him, who has given him access to their hearts, who has opened the door to let him in. And then he judges what residual elements need fixing. Where do you need healing? Where do you need transforming? And he applies his merits, his character, his his victories into our our hearts and minds. So it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. We get a new heart and right spirit. We are transformed. Come on, you all have experienced it. A third judgment. I saw... Thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. This is Revelation 20, 4 through 6. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. 1 Corinthians 6, 3. Don't you know that we will judge angels? This is the third judgment. First judgment, we judge whether we can trust God or not. Second judgment, God is making judgments about our condition, what's wrong, diagnosing, and the judgments that are therapeutic, not only for us individually, but for the entire plan of salvation. And he's intervening and acting, using his judgment to bring salvation. Third judgment, after we have been resurrected or translated into heaven, during the thousand years, we will sit and we will judge the lost. We will judge and make judgments about what the angels have done, we will review the history of what's transpired and draw conclusions and judgments about these things. Don't you know you will judge angels? So during the thousand years, the saints review the history of what transpired in the lives of the lost and of the angels so that no doubt is ever left in any mind about any lost intelligent being in regards to God's actions and God's desire for them to be in heaven. 
we will judge they are lost because they refused every opportunity, every intervention, every mercy, every grace that God poured upon them. They, they were lost by their choice, not by God's will. And the fourth judgment, Revelation 20, 11 and 12, I saw a great white throne and him who sat, seated on it. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which was the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. And what is recorded in the books of heaven? Character. The fourth judgment. Notice this, what Jesus said, Matthew 12, 33 through 37. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings forth good out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings forth evil out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment. For every careless word you have spoken, for by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. What's being described? Jesus is describing their actual character from the abundance of their heart. The mathematician brings forth math of the math sort of, and the musician brings forth music. The pervert brings forth perversion. He is describing that people express, act out, and live what's in their hearts, their character. And that is what it ultimately determines their judgment in the end, the actual condition of each heart. It is an accurate diagnosis of what actually is. So he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is wicked, let him be wicked still. The end of the thousand years, the fourth judgment, the end of the thousand years, when the New Jerusalem, the gates are open and no one comes in. The wicked acknowledged they were wrong and God was right, but they attacked the city anyway. Then they experienced the fires of unveiled truth flowing out from the city, out across the earth as God reveals and no longer holds back his life-giving glory that the saints and the righteous are living in. And when that happens and they come into the fullness of infinite truth and love and they have full awareness of their own corruption of character and all the pain and suffering they've caused others, what does the Bible say they do when they see his face and they see his reality and they see the truth of his glory and his righteousness? They cry for the mountains to fall on them and hide them from him who sits on the throne. What does that reveal about their character? What does it reveal about their desire? What does it reveal about where they want to be? Do they want to be in his presence? No. They are reaping what they have sown. They are severing the final tie to the source of life and they enter non-existence. And all the saved judge that God could have done nothing more to save them. There is no human law court determining guilt or innocence or imposing any types of punishments. That is Satan's lie based on the imperial law lie. Key learning points, there are four judgments. Confusion occurs when we mix them together. These judgments are about reality, the actual condition of hearts and minds, not legal standing. It's time for a roundtable discussion.